Ventricular conduction abnormalities are a common subject for testing because there are classic patterns to recognize on the ECG, and they have prognostic implications for patients with underlying or acquired heart disease. Here's a list of diagnoses we're going to cover in this section. First, we'll look at left fascicular hemi blocks, like left anterior fascicular block and left posterior fascicular block. Next, we'll consider left and right bundle branch block. Finally, we'll consider a combination of the above in the bi and tri fascicular blocks. So first of all, we have left anterior fascicular block. Notice here several features on the ECG denoting that the anterior fascicle in the left bundle branch is out. First, notice that leads 1 and AVL have a small Q and a large R wave. Second, notice that leads 3 and foot have a small R wave and a large deep S wave. Third, look at the deep S wave and reciprocal opposite pointing T wave in the QRS. Here, the QRS is prolonged, but not larger than three small boxes, so we don't quite have full left bundle branch block yet. Finally, notice that because lead one is positive, but foot is negative, we have a left axis deviation, and this is at least negative 45 degrees in severity. All these features combined show the classic footprint of left anterior fascicular block. Our next example is left posterior fascicular block. First, notice that we have an opposite appearance in the limb leads from the last ECG. This time, we have a small R and deep S wave in lead one, and a small Q and a large R wave in leads three and foot. Our axis has shifted over to the right with greater than 100 degree angle. And a defining characteristic is the unusually tall R wave that's seen in leads V1 through V3 with a prolonged QRS. Notice here though that the QRS duration is not yet longer than 120 milliseconds or three small boxes. Taken together, we have left posterior fascicular block in this ECG. Now let's consider the situation where the bundle branch block is a little higher upstream in the conduction system and now affects the entire left bundle branch. Here you can see a very wide QRS that lasts longer than 120 milliseconds. If you look in leads V1 and V6, you have some defining features of left bundle branch block. First, look at how wide and deep the S wave is here in lead V1. You see a tiny R wave, but mainly a huge deep S wave. Notice how in lead V1, the T wave is pointing opposite of the deep wide S wave. This is classic for left bundle branch block. Also notice how we have nearly the perfect mirror opposite in lead V6 with a wide tall R wave and a flat to downward turning T wave. This is emblematic of left bundle branch block. Now the right bundle branch does not typically have posterior and anterior fascicles, but it often has a moderator band which traverses through the cavity of the right ventricle. You can see that with right bundle branch block, again, our QRS duration is long, over 120 milliseconds or greater than three small boxes. But here in lead V1, we have a tiny R wave and a moderate S wave, and then an even bigger upward deflection called the R prime wave. This RSR prime is sometimes called bunny ears and is emblematic of right bundle branch block. We see that the T wave is pointing downward, away from the upward pointing RSR prime wave. In lead V6, we can see the mirror opposite is true. Now we have a deep wide S wave and a prolonged QRS and then an upward pointing T wave. Taken together, this is a classic appearance of right bundle branch block on the ECG. Now sometimes with very diseased myocardium, we can actually have different combinations of right bundle branch block coupled with either left anterior or left posterior blocks. This first example is a bifascicular block with both left anterior fascicular block and right bundle branch block. 
and we see some overlapping elements here. First, you see the upward small q big R waves in leads 1 and AVL. Second, you see the downward RS waves in lead 3 and foot. And you also see the classic appearance of right bundle branch block, which is most prominently seen in leads V1 through V6. Here's a trickier one. This is bifascicular block, where you have both right bundle branch block and left posterior fascicular block. You can see the classic RSR prime bunny ears in lead V1 with a reciprocal downward T wave and essentially a mirror image of this in lead V6. Also notice the extremely tall R waves seen in leads V1 through V3. Taken together, this is by fascicular block involving the left posterior fascicle. Finally, you can see elements of conduction delay in all three limbs of the ventricular conduction system in trifascicular block. In the yellow and purple boxes, we can see left anterior fascicular block. In the green box, we see evidence of left posterior fascicular block. And in the blue box, we have an RSR prime wave that is reminiscent of right bundle branch block. So there's evidence of trifascicular block here.